Hi, my name is uh, Charles Yeo, Y-E-O. I'm the Samuel D. Gross Professor and Chairman of the Department of Surgery at Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So, you know, one thing about surgery is this is the 100th anniversary of the American College of Surgeons, so it's, but it's a field that's changed dramatically. And I think surgeons back in 1912, if they were around today, in 2012, they'd be amazed. Um, you know, we're doing pinhole surgery. We're using minimally invasive techniques. We're focusing on uh, smaller operations, whereby um, the operations of years ago were big, big operations. We're, we have the ability to use targeted therapy. We understand the genome and the proteome much better. So I think as surgery has evolved, we actually are able to accomplish a lot more with a lot less in the way of invasive techniques. I mean, it's very exciting, and the surgical residents who are in the midst of this revolution see it on a year-to-year -year basis how things change. As a chairman, I interact with our medical students and our residents and our faculty, junior and senior, um, and the whole way of learning has changed dramatically from um, essentially reading a book, a papyrus, if you will, you know, a sheet of paper, to online access uh, through apps or through search vehicles on your mobile phone or on your desktop, and this is, this is a big deal. So this book's been around for decades. This is the seventh edition of Shackelford Surgery of the Alimentary Tract, and I've had the uh, privilege of being involved with it now for the last three editions, and the last two serving as the uh, really the senior or editor-in-chief. Um, this book is very different than the last edition. We recruited two brand new section editors who brought a, a brand new look at uh, two different areas. Those section editors are David McFadden, who's now the chairman up at uh, Connecticut and uh, he took over the section on the stomach and duodenum and did a great job of changing the content around. And then Jeff Matthews, the chairman at University of Chicago, here, here in Chicago, who uh, took over the section on pancreas, biliary tract, and liver. And that section was really dramatically changed around. In order to maintain the high level of consistency that we've had in the past, we retained two of our past section editors. That's Jeff Peters, who's the chairman at the University of Rochester in New York, and he maintained his touch on the field of esophageal surgery. And then we also retained um, John Pemberton, a professor of surgery at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And John's done a spectacular job on maintaining the high level of consistency in colon, rectum, and anus. We think of the audience for this book as being um, general surgeons, people with an interest in surgery of the alimentary tract, um, people who do minimally invasive surgery, people uh, thoracic surgeons, um, people who are interested in HPB or hepatopancreatic biliary surgeons, surgeons that are uh, acute care surgeons who may deal with uh, surgical emergencies that involve the alimentary tract, and then um, colorectal surgeons, people that do work on the anus, colon, etc. <clears throat> in addition, I think there's a whole group of young surgeons out there who are somewhat undifferentiated who use this as an encyclopedic textbook, a textbook with a lot of content in it that deals with the GI tract. And then, um, truth be told, um, our colleagues in gastroenterology and hepatology use this book as a, um, as a supplement, if you will, to their um, sources for information because many of their books don't deal with the surgical aspects as comprehensively as this book does.